Hello everyone, it's Fluffy, and I'm back with what may possibly be the final uh, medium tank on Neo Tank Pew Pews that's been happening. At least, I'm not, I don't have another game of it, so unless I get another game, this might be the last medium tank on Neo Tank series. This map, Stolen Eras, we're playing Tier 3 Fog. And I'm up against same person who destroyed my last medium tank army. But this time I'm bringing back my army from the previous video, the mega tank and the bomber, and seeing how it works just because even if I lose, there's always things you can learn from trying new things. So I'm going to make them face the left while I face the right. So we are facing opposite directions. I picked Andy because I just like healing. Andy is a pretty solid pick for the most part. Not too weak. And uh, as long as your units don't die, you can come back pretty strong. Which also means my mega tank from the previous video will probably be very strong as well. Since Andy can just heal the mega tank up whenever it takes damage. So let's begin, let's just get right into it. My opponent picked Drake. Some people say Andy counters Drake. I don't know about that. Uh, Andy can heal up the Drake damage, but at the same time, when Drake uses his powers, uh, he can often get a bunch of kills onto Andy, and you can't heal that unit, so we'll see how this goes. I go for my neutral base because of course I would. You definitely want your unit count as high as possible. He does the same. Goes up for the turn 1 property capture. I do the same. Going, well, go for my neutral base. Go for my turn 1 property capture. And go for my turn 1 property capture. I want my money. I'm Andy. I want to get big expensive units as soon as possible because bigger units have a harder time dying and if they don't die, they come back because I can heal them. I go for my back capture because well, my middle, my uh, rightmost base can probably handle these right properties. My bottom base will probably handle the bot bottom properties and therefore the back captures could be handled by the middle base which otherwise doesn't really have much to capture. I guess it could also go towards the center, but I already have an infantry going there, so I think going for the back capture for some immediate money is perfectly fine. He goes for a day 3 recon, already starting to move it up. Makes sense, you don't want Andy to get too much money, otherwise Andy can just afford big units. And I think my plan here was this infantry captures this property and this infantry can go for this capture chain here. And I built my first tank because I'm expecting recons. And like I said, I'm Andy. I want expensive units. I don't really care if they get money. I just care that I get money. So tanks to defend against recons are pretty nice. The recon already spots this uh, city, but fortunately my tank is already in the position to defend said infantry. So very nice. And I couldn't afford another tank, so just uh, three more infantry. I don't need the vision just yet. I just want to make sure my tank can cover all these properties that I want. There's a second recon. Oh, I don't see the recon here. What do I do with the tank? Oh, I still don't see the recon, but the recon sees my tank. That's a shame. I skipped the comm tower because I don't. We're not fighting yet. Comm towers don't give any money. They only give a plus 10% firepower to all of your units. If there's no fighting, the firepower is useless. 
so I went for this ca capture instead, which is a little more contested. Just a tiny bit. And I go for this capture, now that it is well within the protection of my tank. I start going for this property, getting some vision first. And built my first recon because I do need some vision, especially if I want to go for this property. And so he does a similar thing, spotting this property. Oh, I didn't go spot for this property, that's strange. Hmm. Recon sees my tank move into this forest. I honestly thought uh, my recon was going to go spot this infantry. But I guess because I'm a uh, ever... I'm, a, I'm fluffy, I'm a coward, I don't like to fight. I think I'm just sitting here building a defense, building an artillery to help support this city. First shot has been fired. And I was like, yeah, I got a tank nearby, I can shoot back at the recon. Until you realize I have no vision in this area. Which is very bad, because if you don't have vision, you can't shoot anything. My infantry can't doesn't have the movement to get vision, which is very sad. But I start front shifting my units there. I could go for this interrupt, but I am a coward and I don't like attacking if I don't have to. Instead, I buy a medium tank and I'm going to wait for my big vehicle to come into the play before attacking. I'm partially hoping that's... yeah. Yeah, never mind, it's never happening anyway, so there's no point. Drake builds a copter. Now Drake, in Advance Wars by Web, gets minus 20% firepower for air units. But they still have the strength of not dying when they attack. So I still need to buy an anti-air or a copter of my own. I prefer anti-airs. If I, if I want to deal with this copter. My recon goes down for vision. Infantry goes for vision. And I decide to take a tank shot. Because I have a medium tank that's supporting my frontmost tank. I also have this artillery supporting my frontmost tank. And if the artillery gets shot by the infantry, I don't care. I'm Andy. I will heal it back up for free. That's what I'm thinking with this attack. And he does uh, retreats for the most part as his units are not in position. And as much as I want, he built a Neo tank. Uh, the medium tank on Neo tank. Few pews are about to happen again. The battle between the two, the former great tank and a new main battle tank. I send my infantry to attack here, but it also serves to act as a slight bit of a wall. Artillery in the forest, because artillery in the forest. I keep my medium tank outside of range for the recon. So the blue color outline is the range of the recon and it only sees this tank at most. I have a copter of my own. And I built an artillery here just in case somebody decides to attack at my two base side. Artillery fires. Now I know there's an artillery in this uh, silo. Recon goes in, gets a bunch of vision. Tank sits on the property and outside of my artillery range. Admittedly, looking back now, Artillery on this plane's tile would probably be better. It still covers the city. If an infantry shoots at it, I can heal it up for free because I'm Andy. And I can hide something else in the forest that could be much more dangerous. But uh, because of my misplacement of artillery, 
it's in a very awkward position where it wants to fire, but it would also be blocking its own unit from... But it's all like, it's right next to an enemy unit, and if it fires, it can't really run away. But I'm thinking, I have a medium tank. I'm pretty confident. I fire. I fire. Get these nice kills, clearing the path. Artillery gets a shot. Tank gets a shot. Tank kills the recon. And I know there's an artillery right here, so I do not fire from the show tile. Instead, I move my recon all the way down here, kill this infantry, getting a bunch of vision. And now I'm feeling pretty confident because my medium's into play, I'm outside of range of this artillery, and if this art my own artillery cannot be shot because if he moves away from the city, he will have no vision on this forest. I also have a battle copter on the way, which is very nice. And I build another battle copter. He fire, he sacks his tank. And then the Neo tank comes in. Sits on the city. My artillery cannot fire at the Neo tank. Copter goes in. Tank gets cleared. And my medium tank falls. No, dead units cannot heal. I wanted to heal up my medium tank. And from there it's it's like these pesky neo tanks. They're so evil. They are replacing the great and powerful medium tanks. No. But I continue to fight on because I'm not going to let this copter get away from hitting my unit. So I fire at the infantry, getting rid of a tile. Anti air moves in, kills copter. Copter goes in, attacks the tank, and I start hitting a bunch of stuff that I can hit. I wanted to hit the artillery, but there was no way to hit it to begin with. And I thought, alright, I'm trapping the Neo tank, perhaps with my copter and my first strikes. Maybe it's not so bad to continue fighting for now, for for this turn, but I should definitely retreat next turn. I, I told myself, even if nothing else comes in the fog, I have to retreat because I don't want the Neo tank getting more kills, especially while it's still sitting on a property where it's very tanky. There's the Typhoon. And this is where the myth that, well, the partial myth that Andy counters Drake shows that it's not really as true as it could be. Infantry dies, infantry dies, recon dies. Well, that recon was going to die regardless. He sacks the infantry, so this infantry dies. Artillery gets a one hit KO. Tank. That's almost a one-hit KO. The anti-air should die. Infantry dies. Infantry dies. Artillery dies. Anti-air kills this tank. Now, when people say Andy counters Drake because Andy can just heal up the damage, that's usually only uh, mostly in lower elo where players just press the button. Oh, I have Drake Super, I use it. That's not always the case in higher elo. In higher elo, the Drake player tends to hold it against an Annie. If they're against anyone else, they probably just press it as soon as they get it. But against Andy, they wait until they have plenty of hits and plenty of guaranteed kills before using their Super to kill as much of Andy's units as possible so that Andy cannot heal them up can't heal that unit. And so, I use my hyper upgrade to heal up my units. And this is where I get really sad. Uh, my tank came from this base. I could have also placed my tank onto this property 
and it probably is a better position to put it in this property because this tank does not have the movement to reach the recon thanks to the rain. If I moved onto the property instead, and I should have because I've known the super is coming, I would have been able to walk through the road tile and then walk through the shoal tile to reach the recon. I would be able to one hit KO the recon, start capturing this property, and uh, also this property for that matter, and move my recon my artillery in to support both these captures. Well, they'll support one of these captures anyway. But because of that, I can't kill the recon. And if I can't kill the recon, well he has vision over this entire area. Along the mountain also helps with his vision. It's a little decreased because of the rain. But the fact that his recon is not dead is really demoralizing. I go for this two hit KO. Uh, and he does get a slight firepower boost during his super, so I'm able to clear the tiles for my for some of my vehicles to escape anyway. My tank manages to get away, my copter manages to get away. But I still lost so many units in the previous turn. I start going for these captures. Still sad my art my tank could not kill the recon. I go for I decide not to go for this property and instead just go for these two properties which feel a little bit safer. Now I should have known that I'm not getting this property because I I've no I've assumed that there's just an infantry sitting on the mountain the whole game. Sending this recon in to fire you know, I think I still would have done this anyway. Getting vision is just that important. I was able to spot this tank in the process. And I built my bomber. Like I said in the previous video, my medium tank might not be the main battle tank, but my medium tank can still support the bomber by knocking out the anti-airs. Then I can bring my bomber in to kill the expensive neo tanks. Now it's their turn. They finish cleaning up whatever units I still have over here and begin the front shift. They see that I'm attacking up here, so they begin slowly sliding their units up. My recon survives, yay! And two infantry hits this, thanks to my defense bonus from my power, I survive. And my artillery begins to fire. First, I get some kills. And I wall off this property capture. He can easily break through to save it, but I'm fine with that because it means more units that my artillery can get to shoot on. And this is probably where I make a blunder. Uh, I begin my front shift to the top right because that's where I'm expecting the next fight to be. And I choose to strike from the city. Now striking from a property is typically good because you get a strong defense bonus. But uh, in the moments of my quick plays, I attack from a direction that's within one turn tank reinforcement from their base, which is never a good idea to go into their, their base reinforcements. Unless you have an overwhelming force, which I don't have, do not go within one turn's reinforcements from the base. I should have pulled this recon back, then sent my tank to strike this tank. Or rather, move Recon and Forest, that's also an option. And then Strike Tank from a road. I already realized my mistake when I went onto this property, but it's too late. And I built a rocket. This player is very good. He's played it. He's also got matched against other high rated players as well. So I thought, alright, his Neo Tank is clearly beating my medium tank strategy. Maybe I should start using crazy builds, dynamic changes that are non that are not in the meta. Most people do not build rockets. So I thought if I build a rocket, maybe he might not be prepared for dealing with one. And I also built an APC because I'm facing against Drake. My stuff is going to run out of fuel very soon if I don't resupply it. 
So, uh, APC it is. I also start shifting my tanks up. Not knowing where his army is, I move my infantry to start capturing this property. Recon moves forward, getting nice vision. And tank moves up, interrupts the captures. Tank sits on property. Neo tank comes in. I'm already very sad because my bomber is not in position to bomb the Neo tank. But it's fine because I know he has anti air. He's. I, well, I don't know that, but he's seen at least two copters from me that's alive, so he probably does have anti air. Regardless, I get the city, so I'm happy. Unfortunately, my tank just straight up dies in this city, which is very sad. I, I do my best to save the city. I still want my money because I'm Andy. I send my copters in, and the reason why I send them in is because I know he has anti-air. If I kill the anti-air, then my bomber's uncontested, and that's my plan. I move my recon into the forest where it can cover all my anti-airs, I mean all my copters except for my outmost copter, which will probably die anyway. My recon goes into this little corner where he has no vision, and maybe I can move it back to get information on the base. Information is very important, especially if you want to know what units to build to counter them. I place my bomber in such a way that I cover all of my units while it's still being very safe from anti-air. Artillery moves back into the forest. I got the city, I'm happy. I'm just going to be happy with it and do nothing. Right, recon moves up, gets a lot of vision. Always move your recons first so you can get your vision. Anti-air goes in, anti-air goes in. I'm feeling very happy because both of those anti-airs are within range of my rocket and artillery. Starts killing off my infantry here, which makes sense. And I'm surprised this copter survived. Until I realized this is the copter with low fuel, and I chose not to resupply because I was expecting it to die. On the bright side, it does mean he doesn't think of this copter as a threat, which means I could potentially make it a threat by removing all the anti-airs, so that's what I do. Tank goes in, gets some vision, Artil or my rocket one hit KOs this anti-air. I want to get rid of his vision, so I artillery the recon, and then proceed to kill it. Bomber comes in, and I took out, I effectively eliminated this anti-air. So now, I killed both his anti-airs in the area, he has no more anti-airs around, and my bomber is uncontested. I build one anti-air of my own to deal with his copters. I resupply my artillery, which has been running low on fuel. My recon inches in just a little bit to get some... get a little bit closer to this forest. Of course, he sees my recon moved into this tile. He tries going for this property. Which makes sense, he wants to regain the income advantage that he had. And I'm thinking, alright, he I just killed both his anti-airs, he probably doesn't have an anti-air in range to do some stuff. Unfortunately, I also don't have a lot of vision, so uh, APC go in, drop infantry for vision. I use my hyper repair because, well, I heal up my recon, well, it guarantees this uh, recon kill. I can kill this infantry, which is very nice. He now has no, well, never mind. He does have vision over my recon, but his tank will have to be up here and away from a fight. I'm, I'm attacking this turn, so if he has to send a vehicle up there to kill my recon, that's one less vehicle fighting me over here. My bomber goes in, 
outside of range of his anti-air reinforcements. And I know he doesn't have anti-air reinforcements because I saw this tank move up. At least, I know it's not from this base. I don't know about reinforcements from the other two bases. I have no vision over there. My rocket moves forward where it can cover my front line. He gets the city back, but I intend to take it again. And I built a recon to support my artillery. Admittedly, I probably should have built a tank here because I know he has a recon and a recon would do a lot of harm if I don't have a tank to respond. But I'm floating a lot of money for a reason. And if you watch my previous video, you will know why. He uses his Typhoon, damages all my units by 2 HP, kills my recon, not the APC, and starts killing a bunch of units. Now at this point, my bomber has uh, bombed a bunch of things, killed an anti-air, killed a tank, it still hasn't quite paid for itself, but it has helped me a bit in the unit count. And I knew there's probably anti-airs around, but uh, if I don't use my bomber, it pretty much becomes useless. So I decide to go get some kills. I know there's a copter here, but due to the vision from his super, there's no way I can really see this copter and kill it with my anti-air. My recon doesn't have vision over the copter because of the minus one vision in the rain. I think what I could have done is anti-air kill, actually no, no, no uh, copter rocket kills this tank, my copter strikes this tank, and then anti-air strikes copter because this copter striking the full HP tank over here would give me vision over this copter. Unfortunately, I didn't do that. So, uh, this copter goes free. Come to think of it, I really don't need my bomber to bomb that. I really could have a... Uh, that attack order I just did, where copter strikes this tank, that would have been enough to, uh... I would have been satisfied with it and pull my bomber back. Oh well, too late. Live moments. And with all the money I floated up, here it is, the mega tank. And I finally built a tank on my left side. As expected, bomber goes down. I was unfortunately unable to get another and the normal power to heal up all these units. So there, there was just not enough attacks for me to take. Fortunately, all of these units would have died regardless. Well, except my bomber, but my bomber would be at 1 HP. Still, still a shame I could not heal up my bomber for that. My copter dies. The copter that was the only one that survived when I charged them in here, ran out of fuel and died. But, all these units are in range of my rockets, so I open fire. I use my Hyper Repair after getting some guaranteed kills. Pew! And I attack. I have a Mega Tank on the way. Doesn't quite cover the Recon, but it does cover my Anti-Air. I begin to move my infantry in, perhaps to sit on this mountain where I can get some vision. I still keep my artillery away from the recon vision. And then I see his artillery fired onto my infantry, which was very sad. He then starts capturing this city, which is also very sad for me. Oh no, my rocket got spotted. No. Fortunately, it survives, and because I'm Andy, I can just heal it up. And now, for the play, the Mega Tank 
It's in the forest so he can't see it. And you might not see the forest because the mega tank's blocking it. But uh, it, it's hidden. The, trust me, the mega tank is hidden in the forest. That big monstrosity is still can somehow still hide. So artillery fires at the at the weakened anti-air. Medium tank comes in, one shot anti-air because medium tanks can or medium tanks can do that. Infantry wall off my rocket. Mega tank comes in, kaboom! One shot a tank. This new tank which was planning to come in next turn is now going to run away scared because of my amazing mega tank and I built an anti-air because I see copters right, tank goes in kills my recon anti-air goes in kills my infantry starts capturing my property and this is where I get really sad I have to choose between vehicles or the infantry capturing my city, which is very painful. You never want to be forced to make that decision. Neo tank comes running scared, and I said, "All right, I'm very far behind. I must use the units I have to uh, make a comeback." I managed to do just enough damage to save the city. Well, a little more than necessary, but enough damage. Mega tank moving forward. It has two ammo left so I built an APC to support it as I go forward. I still need to build an APC to deal with the fuel problem so APC is not a bad buy. I decide this property is so close to my base I might eventually get it back anyway. Besides I need my army momentum to try to bring turn the game around. Income doesn't matter if I just win the fight. That's what I'm thinking. So I decide to fire at the anti-air. I killed the recon to get rid of his vision. It cost me my tank, but I gotta do what I gotta do. Anti-air uh, gets vision in this forest, sees I have nothing, and then tank comes in and kills my artillery. I lose my tank here, and he secures this property, which is unfortunate. At least breaking through to this property seems very expensive with all these units covering it. I kill the anti-air because I want my copters uncontested. Recon goes in, copter goes in. No, I don't save the city. Just kidding, I saved the city, yes! I keep the city for one more turn. The city's at 2 HP, and the infantry's at 1 HP, so it does not capture the city. I begin dropping off my infantry towards the front. No! This recon trapped my infantry. I must get rid of it, start capturing. I must capture as many stuff as I can. I must use the army I have to get an advantage. My bomber was shot down but I still have the mega tank from last week's episode. Typhoon activates and kills my recon. Tank kills my tank. He join caps this city cap is pretty much guaranteed now. There's nothing I can do to stop it. This city is interrupted. I have an anti-air nearby, so that's fine. This city is interrupted, but I have an artillery, so it's fine. Anti-air kills this infantry. Tank gets vision on this tile. And then, the saddest moment of the match. Medium tank comes in. My mega tank able to still fight back, very powerful. Then the Neo tank comes in and kills it. The mega t I just built this army, this new medium tank army last episode. It couldn't even survive one week in my... It couldn't even survive two videos in a row and my, my new medium tank army is already dead. 
that is just the fate of the medium tanks in this new neo tank meta. I use my hyper upgrade, my rocket heals up, it didn't die so it gets a heal. I get some vision with this infantry and kill the copter. Get some vision with this infantry. I decide to start using my ring. My range units the best I can. And just start capturing whatever I can capture. It's a desperation play here. We're almost at the day limit. And it doesn't matter if I... Uh, the armies don't matter if I just get more properties at the end. So I just need to get properties before the day limit. But... It's really over. There's nothing left. He doesn't even shoot the artillery. He he goes after the infantry because he knows the only way I can win is if I capture properties. In fact, I don't even have air units up here anymore. He just built an anti-air because it's easier to kill my infantry with anti-air than tanks. But that was this game. There was nothing left to be done. In other words, there is nothing we can do. APC, do a fancy boost to boost my infantry here to wall my artillery. But yes, the game is pretty much over. So I resign. The medium tanks just could not carry the game. Not against the Neo tanks, which can easily blow it up, as we have very clearly seen from the beginning of the video, where my entire preparations to shift everything to my one base side destroyed because, well, for two reasons, mostly be, uh, partially because my artillery was not moved into this plane's tile, but mostly because. The Neo Tank with its six movement. That is more movement than my Recon has vision. Recons have five vision. Neo Tanks have six movements. And it came in killing my early medium tank, which was very sad. Not the medium tank. With this one attack, my entire army is just shut down. Because of these pesky, annoying Neo tanks. But that was this game. Next week, uh, if I don't have another medium tank on Neo tank game, I'll just. Well, we'll see what happens. See you then. Goodbye.